Hello, I'm Lata from Vilay Road. Now you are watching Asia Motorsport Hour. Yeah, this week on the Asia Motorsports Hour, the winners line up in Thailand. But it was an emotional ride to get there. We know it was a great night for one young woman in particular, but not so great for another. There were happy scenes for Yamaha Thailand, but they're a team used to celebrating the highs and lows of road racing. The Asia Motorsports Hour, right now. Yeah, plenty of big names, some great racing, a little bit of emotion and a little bit of heartbreak. All coming your way from Boram in the next few minutes. But we start with some news from the Philippines, where TJ Alberto is the Philippine Superbike Championship, surprisingly, for the very first time. The Ducati rider won three of the final four races of the season at the Clark International Speedway to confirm his first domestic superbike title. And he emulates his father with this achievement. Finally, the Philippines champion also this year, uh, following in the footsteps of my dad. Uh, of course, since I was born, uh, well, when I was, the year I was born, my dad was also national champion and a few years after. So pretty much my whole uh, young life, I've been trying to follow his footsteps uh, by, of course, getting the national title as well. And uh, a funny story, actually, when uh, my when I was born, it was a few days before the final race of the season for my dad. So my mom and dad actually left me in the hospital uh, as he had to take the title. <laughs> we caught up with TJ as he and his family headed off for a short break after securing the championship, winning 10 of 12 races in the three-round season. I had a good uh, weekend last weekend. Uh, I set, uh, well, I broke the lap record and proceeded to break it again two more times. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, I, had, I had actually clinched the national title a race early uh, with a one race to go. And, um, you know, I think they, they say something about a uh, special helmet, special kit that uh, it shouldn't be worn on the race because it, it can be bad luck. Uh, well, for me, I think it gave me some good luck. I was able to break the track record again with a 1 minute 49.5. So that's like the fastest time of anything really in our local circuit. Uh, but unfortunately, I also got some bad luck and I had crashed out of the race uh, with a few laps to go. But uh, I was enjoying that last one because basically I got to ride without pressure. I could ride uh, just for fun and to enjoy and uh, let's see and to see really what uh, my limits were. So I found the limit. <laughs> The final two races of the BRIC Superbikes Championship in Thailand took place at the Chang International Circuit in Buram. And it was a weekend, as we said, that saw cheers, tears, heartache, and the crowning of the very best Thailand has to offer the racing community. The closest of the championships ahead of the fourth round of the 2021 BRIC Championships was in the 600cc Super Sports competition where Yamaha Thailand's Ratapong Willerath led Honda's Maklada Sarapwek by a mere seven points going into the last two races of the season at Buriram. Maklada was chasing history in her bid to become the first woman to win the championships, in fact, any championship in Thailand. And Maklada, Bike 44, was on pole position ahead of the first race of the round with weather conditions near perfect. อาจารย์ดีมสิทธิศักดิ์อ่อนเฉวียงและมุกดาดาวสารพืชครับโอเคครับสัญญาณไฟแดงติดกำลังจะปล่อยรถครับออกซัดในช่วงเวลานี้
ตาตาโฟนเลยโอ้โห The then followed the intriguing internal Honda plot between McLada and p a s o w i t both of whom could theoretically still win the title. p a s o w i t made his move on the infamous final corner 12. Ah, ครับคุณผู้ชมครับอยู่กันในช่วงไทยไทยกันเฮ้ยเฮ้ยเฮ้ยเอาละสิ p a s o w i t นี่ติดเวลาครับครับแชมป์เจ้าแชมป์เจ้าแชมป์แสงขึ้นมาตรงนี้ที่โป๊ะ12แล้วก็เฮ้ยแล้วก็เป็น p a s o w i t ยังไงเป็นมุกครับ m c l a r d a s a d o p e k holding on for the win and 25 points ahead of p a t o w i t with r a t a p o n g coming in in P3. For the first time this season, m c l a r d a s a d o p e k led the championship. The celebrations were because she was now two points clear of r a t a p o n g Willerot. The last one I got third position, so made me feel like the, my position uh, championship point come to second. So it's pressure to me to make a Sunday. I need to to be in front of the competitor to to make a champion. So it make me like a, a little bit pressure. In the morning of warming up Sunday practice, uh, I just pushing and try to keep like a concentrate to make my my bike setting up perfect. Or for the list, so it is that that I I do. The countdown is on. Honda hoping for an historic day. m c l a r d a literally had r a t a p o n g in her sights. กำลังจะปล่อยโลสัญญาณไฟแดงติดทั้งห้าแถวและออกสาตอนนี้ครับมาดูครับระหว่างมุกดาสารพืชและโรสรัชวงศ์เลโรดครับใครเข้าที่หนึ่งคนนั้นได้แชมป์ไปเลยครับโดนซิ่งมาในช่วงเวลานี้โดนซิ่งมาลายตามรถผ่านโคมีปาออกไปสองคนทั้งสามสี่โอ้โหนี่ดูเลยซิ่งลายครับ A poor start for McLada as she went wide on the opening corner as p a s o w i t z Honda and the Yamaha of r a t a p o n g street clear of the pack trailing in six McLada would push hard too hard and disaster โอ้ยลุ้นจังเลยดูดูหมายเลขครับมาลูเลยอ้าวบุกระดาษาพืชพืชครับ So long as r a t a p o n g stayed on his bike, the 2021 title was his and Yamaha Thailand's. p a s o w i t would go on and take the win, but r a t a p o n g Willerot cruised home in second place. The 2021 Thai Supersport 600cc Brick Champion. แล้วก็จะเป็นเจ้าของวินเนอร์โพเดียมของน้องแชมป์พาสวิตทิติว่าราราครับจบอันดับที่1ครับส่วนคู่นี้มานะครับจากจะมาให้ทนายเรสซิ่งทีมนะครับอันดับ2นั่นคือรัชวงศ์เลโรดครับเจ้าโฟนจบอันดับ2แล้วก็คว้าแชมป์ประจําปีไปด้วยคะแนนสะสมครับพี่ซุปจบอันดับที่3ครับครับผม But do spare a thought for m c l a r d a s a r a p e k Not only did she lose the title, she also lost second place to her Honda teammate p a s o w i t I try to go to be ahead of the of the other competitor, but uh, I saw the pit board from my mechanic that they will signal to me in everything after the l a c e So I saw like a uh, number 44 KO. So after that, I just okay keep no pushing to make a champion to be 100% champion. So I just keep. It's like uh, make me confident with with my racing career because uh, I got more champion and when I work with Yamaha Thailand Racing Team, we know each other and uh, everyone in the team always support to make me faster and make me better during the race. The Bangkok-based Yamaha Thailand Racing Team are one of the names on the Asian Road Racing Championship circle with an incredible record on the tour. If Yamaha Thailand team's marketing guru Nitti is to be believed, when or if the world returns to post-COVID norms, the big blue Yamaha team will be more ambitious than ever before. Unlucky from 2021 that uh, now COVID situation that is make everything is proposed from uh, the main layers of us that Asia Road Racing. Right? Sure, we waiting for and then we cannot waiting to uh, 2022 about the. Asia l o l e s i n g tournament also. We would like to keep going over 100 to the champion and also protect the champion for second days also. We hope to be like that. In the absence of Asian competition this season, Yamaha Thailand have had to be creative in securing rides. For example, there's been some world-level cooperation with Yamaha Philippines. 
to push Kemet Kubo onto the European Moto2 Championship. Yamaha, with this collaboration which, uh, we are for this, is finally come to be uh, sent the uh, Kemet Kubo to uh, Moto2 on MotoGP yeah, tournament. By under name of Yamaha, we are for this master camp team on the next year. But it's been domestically in Thailand that the team have had to focus most of their energies and pretty successfully as well. Ratapong Willerot winning the BRIC 600cc championships and the seemingly inseparable Apiwat Anupar pairing well in contention for superbikes. Tire and that we uh, prove and improve our team more higher than before. And we can break the times uh, of the leg cut of the IC 134.4. So um, this is a great piece of, of us also. But uh, luckily for the first race of Anupa, that cannot be that we could be have the best champ on this year of the IC. For me, it's like uh, our team try to work hard in every every race and also everyone try to make uh, the bike more better and also everything that is the disadvantage or advantage we will try to make it better in every in every race and also for me it's like uh, our team now to be ready in in every tournament that that we need to race and for my mechanic and also everyone in the team make uh, the rider more confident when during we work together so it's it's, it's good for me that to be in this team. It's no surprise that Yamaha remain greedy for success. They're used to winning, you see. Nature Chrysart and Jalen von Polomai both won ARRC titles at 600cc for Yamaha. Ratapong joined that company in 2018. Was Pitapong Boonlet succeeded him as 600cc Supersport champion? And before he moved on to the big bikes, Apiwa Wong Tanan won the 250cc championship in 2016. You see, Yamaha Thailand are a team that expects to succeed. So sure, the direction of our team that we would like to be maintain the main class to be Asia Racing, and also we would like to protect the champs of the candidate. That's sure, uh, over three rider as Lada Pong also on the candidate, we would like to be a protected champ and uh, 1000, maybe we would like to send the same of the rider on 1000 to unit to be a champion and challenge to be a champion on next year. We're about to head into a short commercial break for program sponsors Idemitsu. But before we do, chance for you to win some merchandise. Log on to the ARRC Facebook page to answer two questions about Yamaha Thailand. First, as you saw, Latapong Willerud just wrapped up the BRIC 600 Super Sports title. But can you tell us which position Ratapong finished in the first of the two races that took place this weekend at Boerram? Coming up after the break, a great name from the past, Data Chrysart, with a classic ride of Suzuka. And more from Boerram, as ARRC Spalward Borapang Malawan tries to improve on what's been a perfect season to date in the 400cc championship. Borapong Malwan is the new Brick Superbike 400cc champion. Riding for the high speed racing team, Borapong took a perfect three wins from three races into the final round of the season. It meant that the versatile Thai campaigner 
went into the final two races of the campaign at Buram, holding a 15-point lead over Ratapong Poonlet, bike 44. It was a safe start for the man who rode for TVS in the 2019 ARRC Championship. Tang Ha Ku and Dab Long come off side. Come on, this. Bar do. Come from Tang Tong. Come from John A. Varapong. Come from Huan. What is it? Come from Ho Chok. Come from from him. Come from not bad. Come from Varapong. Come from Huan. Come from number one. Come from Bar do. Mile 26. Come from number two. In the last race of the year, Bar do. But there was a crash for Ratapong Bunle. Blue, blue. Who is it? Okay, okay. 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 So everything going to plan for Vodapong. Leading, looking towards a perfect season. That was until a different Boonlet, Peter Pong, decided to spoil a perfect four out of four. Peter Pong Boonlet, Peter Pong Boonlet, and then how do you do it? Bad, bad, man, do it. Oh, 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 o
not going away with Dejan Kreisar very, very close behind him. The gap between one and two is 0.103 of a second. Koyama is in third, a further second adrift. Dimaseki Ratapong. Ahmed Yudhisthira, look at him moving up into the top six. He's leading the battle for P6 ahead of Anucha, UK Ito. Aslan Shah's made a move as well. He is now into the top nine. While these two are dueling, Koyama is just edging closer and closer. Takahashi takes the lead once again going up the S-Bend. But Kreisart, he has a look and Koyama has dragged Dimaseki very, very much closer. And Koyama, he's a canny character, isn't he? Yeah, Koyama definitely will stay right behind the two, the, the two guys. Oh, but you can see Dimas is there. Dimaseki is making a move. Yeah. The Indonesian takes uh, the Japanese on the inside, moves up into the top three, Astra Honda Racing Team. And that's very nice for him as he goes out into the countryside under the bridge for what will be the third time. We've got 11 and a half laps to go. Koyama, T-Pro, Yuzi Honda currently in fourth place. But this is a, a battle within a battle. And he's right behind them, Ratapong is there. And Amadou to steer as close up as well. Even Aslan Shah up to seven. Yeah, up to seven now. They are coming closer and closer. Yeah, the front two keep fighting, keep battling, you know, the back, the back guys will, the, will come in. This is Aslan Shah just coming through. Amadou de Stira currently in sixth as they come round the spoon curve. And just coming into the shot right-hand corner, that is Aslan Shah in seventh. This is a good performance from Dimaseki. Best we've seen from him so far this season as he crosses the line in third place with ten laps to go. Yeah, <clears throat> Aslan, I think Aslan went up uh, six now. He already passed. So Aslan oh, Shah, oh, bike burning, oh, gosh, I think that is Anucha, Anucha, yeah. I think maybe they have to, there must be a flag coming yeah, for this, yeah, I think they should be have a, a red flag or something, and yeah. Anucha is being stretched off a red flag indeed here, and you always worry when the red flag goes out, particularly when there's flames like that, your thoughts on at this moment, yeah, because you have to save the bike, save the riders, you know, the, the bike burning. And, uh, the well, it is a red flag, obviously. That was on the on the final chicane as Anucha came a cropper. We do hope he's all right. We saw the stretcher bearers on very, very quickly. For obvious reasons, there's a, a real medical attention at that area. The five men are there and the conditions will obviously be very, very messy just for a little while. And they'll have to clear the track, but we are under red flag at this stage. And the red flag at this stage has Takahashi currently in the lead. Nature Kreisart in second place. Dimaseki, Koyama in fourth, Ratapong and Amadou de Stira. Here is the you can see that's got away from him and uh, that's on the main straight as well. Kuyama, see him just behind. Ratapong is there as well. Amadou de Stira on the right. And what I'm really keen to see is how Aslan Shah Kamruzama gets away. He's on the third row of the grid on the left-hand side here. Kreisart and Aslan Shah has got off to a decent start and is up into fifth place. Aslan Shah Kamruzama and this has proved to be a very, very lucrative time for Aslan Shah Kamruzam, and he is up into fifth place. Yuki Takahashi leads in this sprint for the line. He's dragged Dimaseki alongside him. Koyama is up into second place. It's Deja Kreisart who is leading, and Aslan Shah has done a terrific job to get up into fourth. Koyama in second place. Look at that, Deja Kreisart in first. Top, uh, Takahashi is sulking a little bit in fifth place. It wasn't meant to be like this, but there is Aslan Shah Kamruzaman in third place. He's got Koyama in his sights on this main straight. Aslan Shah goes past Koyama into second place for Aslan Shah. Still a long, long way to go. We've got the best part of four laps for Aslan Shah Kamruzaman making a real fist of this. Dejan Kreisar using all his experience to make sure Aslan Shah can't get to the front. Bags of experience between them. 35-year-old Deitcha, 33-year-old Aslan Shah Kamruzaman. Behind them, Koyama's got bags of experience as well. Dimaseki, fourth, and Takahashi still sulking, but now he's just beginning to put on the afterburners as we come into the spoon curve once again. 
There are three and a half laps to go. Aslan Shah, Kamru Zaman has a look on the inside of Deja into the slipstream. Aslan Shah comes up on the outside. Aslan Shah over the brow of the hill takes the lead for the first time here at Suzuka. As they come over the line at the end of, well, in the restarted lap, lap two, it's Aslan Shah, Kamru Zaman, but look at Deja Kreisart. I think Deja has got good straight line speed and Deja is level with Aslan Shah and overtakes him going down the hill. Deja Kreisar back into the lead. Deja Kreisar from Aslan Shah, Kamuzaman in the green livery. Koyama, he's the danger, he is the danger because nobody's got away from Koyama thus far and Takahashi has got straight line pace as well. Penultimate time, this is where Aslan Shah normally can take Deja Kreisart up and over the brow of the hill in focus and it's happened once again. Oh, Koyama coming in. Koyama up into second place. Oh. They are trying to do that in the last time they are trying it now. And Koyama has a look on the inside, Deja on the outside takes second from Koyama. Aslan Shah, Kamru Zaman leads coming into the final lap. Deja Kreisart second, Takahashi fourth, Koyama in third, Dimaseki fifth, Yudhisthira putting pressure, as is Yuki Ito. It's Aslan Shah leading, we're into the final lap, less than six kilometers to go. This it's is in front now. <laughs> yeah, very close. Deja Kreisart overtakes Aslan Shah, we've seen that before, Koyama. He's looking for a space. Aslan Shah goes on the inside. Kreisart looks on the inside. Koyama, he's battling. Takahashi is looking for a gap, wheel to wheel, from these front four. Well, Aslan Shah, Takahashi looks on the inside yeah. of Koyama. Yeah, Takahashi coming. pushes Koyama outside. Yeah, he's coming, you can see. So Takahashi up to third, but Aslan Shah, Kamruzaman on the bike art. Kawasaki is leading, Kreisart in second. Takahashi, a podium place at the moment as they come round the deck the curb there's half a lap to go it's gonna be close <laughs> they come round the spoon curve for the final time hunkers down touches hugs the track Deja Kreisar low Takahashi prepares for a challenge has Kamruzam and got enough Aslan Shah is leading the way Deja Kreisar second Aslan Shah up the brow of the hill. Takashi currently in third place. Deitcher makes a move. Aslan Shah closing, but Deitcher goes past him on the outside. Deitcher Kreisar leads. Takahashi, he puts his challenge in. They come into the chicane for the final time. Aslan Shah on the inside. Deitcher closes. Aslan Shah bends. Deitcher goes on the outside. Deitcher Kreisart has got this victory for Thailand. Aslan Shah will be second. That's Takahashi in third. Four overtakes <laughs> on one single corner. Yo, couldn't make it up. Yeah, that is exciting. Oh. No wonder, no wonder Deja Kreisart is cheering. What a battle, what a race, and full respect from Aslan Shah Kamruzaman. And Kayama. We are told that um, the official winner is Deja Kreisart. And how it works is the, the times from the first four laps and the times from the second five laps are combined. And so it's a time situation. I need to get confirmation on how that works. So Aslan Shah doesn't come into the reckoning, although he's produced a marvelous finish to come into second place. We understand that the race winner is Deitcher Kreisart. Second, based upon timing, will be Yuki Takahashi. And third, also based upon timing, is Tomoyashi Koyama. Deitcher Kreisart with that win, and Deitcher, the subject of the second question in today's quiz. Go to the ARRC Facebook page to answer two questions about Yamaha Thailand. Now, Deitcher won his first ARRC 600cc race in the 2007 season. The win you just saw at Suzuka was his last 600 win on the Yamaha Blue. But what year did that race take place? We look ahead to a beautifully poised finale to the Malaysian Cup Pre-Championship. Two races to go, just four points separate, first from second in the 150cc championship. And a rider slumped with fatigue and a legend in tears. What's going on at Boram?
Welcome back to the Asia Motorsports Hour. Thanks for the quiet as always. Now, last week on this show, we showcased the Tail and Bend circuit, as it's become known from Adelaide, at the finale of the Australian Superbike season. Well, the Bend was announced to be returning as the season ending venue for the 2022 ASBK campaign. The season will start at Phillip Island in late February before moving on to Ipswich, Wakefield Park, uh, Darwin, Morgan Park Raceway, Simmons Plain on Tasmania, returning to Phillip Island for round seven in November before the season ending event at Tail and Bend on the first weekend in December. Can't wait. Now we're deliberately saving the best action till very late in the show. It's the finale of the BRIC Superbike Championship in Thailand for 1,000cc category. Already we've shown you Artek McLada at 600cc, a cheeky champion in Voropong at 400cc, but now we feature a three-man showdown for the biggest bikes of them all. The field might be thin at the 2021 BRIC 1,000cc Superbike Championship, but the competition for the title is deadly serious. Yamaha Thailand's Anupab Samun on 57 points is third in the championship. His teammate, number 24, Api Wat Wang Tanan, is on 60 points. And just three ahead of them is former world superbike rider Titipong Guadakon, or Ting Note, for the Kawasaki team, who are not competing in the championship next year. This race promised to be a cracker. I promise you, it does not disappoint. The Yamahas were quicker in qualifying and Titipong's first concern was to make sure that the Yamahas didn't get a jump on the Kawasaki. Then at the end of lap three, a big moment. And then there were two. And for the remainder of the race, Titipong stalked the back wheel of Anupab. He waited and waited and waited until the final corner to strike. A near impossible overtake around the outside of turn 12 and a 10 point swing in the championship. You could understand the outpouring of emotion in the park for me. So Titipong on pole for race two, literally praying for a good race. A championship lead of 11 points meant the third would secure the title for Kawasaki. A repeat of the mechanical problems for Apiwat effectively securing that title. <laughs> No need for last corner heroics this time. Tai Yamaha with the win for Anupab. But the title to Kawasaki on their farewell to the BRIC Championships. We have two for five times in the Thai World Championship and then we got in for title. Thank you for fighting Yamaha Thailand racing team in the Seoul X. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much for Otsan Chan International, also PTT all sponsor. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm so sorry. 2021 end of season that we are racing activity all finished. I'm so sorry for big fun and all sponsors, all organized. But we have followed to for Kawasaki policy. Then thank you so much for big lighter for the north. Thank you so much for our racing mechanics. But 
Thank you so much for Thai and everyone, big fan and uh, all family. Lovely. Thanks so much. For Kawasaki Thailand and Titi Pong Wologon, Dem is a good fighter with us for a long time. And also we sad to hear that the next year um, they will be leave from any tournament. We, we hope to um, wish them to be uh, good luck and also uh, we hope to see them again in the next year. So Kawasaki and Fujiwara going out on an emotional high. Also looking to end the season on a high note are the competitors at the Malaysian Cup Pre-Championship, which comes to a conclusion next week at Sepang in Malaysia. To set the scene for the event, we spoke to Nasha Azira, a commentator for TWMR and Capri. Untuk perlombaan Malaysian Capri musim 2021, akhirnya sampai di penghujung kita akan menyaksikan dua perlombaan sahaja lagi di mana persaingan dalam kategori CP150 masih uh, sangat sengit. Kita belum tahu lagi siapa yang akan bergerak juara di mana Afif dan juga Azroy akan merebut gelaran juara sekali lagi dan ini merupakan kali ketiga buat Azroy mencuba untuk bergelar juara. Empat mata saja perbezaan di antara Afif dan juga Azroy dan kalau kita lihat persaingan sangat-sangat uh, sengit dan sangat-sangat uh, mencabar bagi kategori CP150 yang kita selalu saksikan dan uh, kalau kita lihat jika Afif berjaya untuk uh, bergelar juara sekali lagi kali ini uh, beliau akan merupakan pelumba yang akan uh, bergelar juara buat kali ketiga betul-betul yang mampu uh, bersama dengan Ahmad Fuad Baharudin uh, di mana Ahmad Fuad adalah pelumba yang memenangi perlombaan ataupun bergelar juara sebanyak tiga kali dalam kelas expert dan kali ketiga buat Azroy untuk mencuba uh, kalau kita lihat pada tahun 2019 Azroy kalah di tangan Afi tahun lalu kalah di tangan uh, Helmi dan tahun ini kita akan lihat bagaimana adakah mampu untuk Azroy bergelar juara CP150 bagi musim 2021 perlombaan Petronas Malaysia Cup dalam kategori CP125 pula uh, persaingan uh, CP125 tahun ini memang cukup kompetitif uh, di mana uh, kita lihat pada awalnya Shafiq Rosli cuba untuk uh, mempertahankan kedudukan tapi di uh, pertengahan kita nampak Adib yang semakin baik semakin meningkat dan uh, Adib seorang pelumba yang sangat berpengalaman dan tahun ini pun kita dapat lihat jentera Adib yang sangat bagus Uh, tunggangan Adib yang cukup konsisten ini yang uh, memberikan Adib tahun ini peluang untuk uh, bergelar juara 32 mata di antara Adib dan juga Hafizah Rofa Adib hanya perlu untuk uh, mengumpul semaksimum yang mungkin mata untuk beliau bergelar juara CP125 Terakhir kali terakhir uh, Adib bergelar juara adalah pada tahun 2011 uh, sewaktu uh, di kategori Wira APG Okey kepada semua peminat sukan pemotongan negara jangan lupa untuk menyaksikan The Final Battle perlombaan akhir bagi Petronas Malaysia Kaprik perebutan gelaran juara musim 2021 siapa yang akan bergelar juara anda boleh saksikan di Facebook Live dan uh, peminat di International juga boleh saksikan di Facebook Live Malaysia Kaprik boleh saksikan di RTM TV 2 Astro Arena saya Nasha dan rakan tugas saya Azlan Shah Danny Bogger dan juga Isu akan membawakan secara langsung untuk anda semua peminat-peminat sukan pemotoran di Lita Sepang. Jumpa anda nanti, okey? And that's our show. A reminder, ARRC merchandise courtesy Idemetsu to be won if you go to the ARRC Facebook page and to two Yamaha Thailand related questions. First, as you might have seen in part one of this show, Ratapong Willerat has just wrapped up the BRIC 600cc Super Sports title. But can you tell us what position Ratapong finished in the first of the two races that took this took place this last weekend at Buram? Scroll back if you're not sure. Data Chrysart won his first ARRC 600cc race in the 2007 season. The win we showed you in our classic race segment at Suzuka was his last 600 win on the Yamaha Blue. But what year did that race take place? Next week on the Asia Motorsports Hour, a winner-takes-all finale to the Cup 3 Championship. It's the last competitive racing fixture in Asia in 2021. And we hope to end a difficult year in style.